right, what's up, everybody? Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Welcome, big and back. Mayo Media Net Fantasy Baseball Picks and Bets with the big dude. It's Big Johnny Stud coming to your worldwide from Brooklyn, New York. Maybe did you miss me? Or did you miss me? You know, I missed you so much, man. Mayo Media Net with the big man at the helm, Patty Mayo. Thank you so much. This bad boy is brought to you by Underdog. We're going to start off right. The season hasn't just kicked off, but that doesn't mean we can't get some action down, baby. Action Jackson, what it's all about, especially this time of year, moving pieces as far as injuries new job openings, creating some value in the best ball streets. And there's still plenty of time to take full advantage. That's what we're going to start today. Again, underdog fantasy. Thank you so much for being a win under these sales. Let's go get it, everybody. MLB 2024 on deck. Oh, yeah. Can you feel it? Oh, yeah. Cream rising to the top. Oh, yeah. Love it. Oh, man. You know me. Ready to go off the rails. Right now, we are waiting for the lobby to fill. I figured in the meantime, we'll let you know what we're going to be doing. All right, so between now and opening day, depends. If there's a good reaction, we could do one every day. We could do a few a day, whatever. I don't care. You know me, man. Pedal to the metal. Balls to the whistle. We'll cover some underdog drafts. I'll take you through my strategy as I draft. If you're really into it, you can check me out on Twitter, at John Legaza, J-O-H-I-N-L-A-G-H-E-Z-Z-A. If you haven't signed on up to Underdog, the promo code is MMN, Mayo Media Net, MMN. That'll let them know Big Johnny sent you. Matching $100, first $100 on a deposit. Great way to do it. You know, good spot. Also, I mentioned best ball going on. Underdogs, guys are super sharp. They know what the people want. More, more, more. The dinger that I'm in is the large field contest. That bad boy is a $10 entry. Large field, like I said, 84,000 entrants. 100K to the top. Baby, baby. What's better than that, man? A little bit of a different format than maybe some people are used to, right? It's not rotisserie. There is a, a playoff format. I got it right here just so I didn't want to drop the ball on this one. The first 16 weeks is technically round one. Then you go two-week playoffs, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 is the championship. I'll tell you what, I really like that also. We don't want to be playing for big money at the very, very end of the season. It's like the, that is just absolutely the worst. Room a little slow to fill. Funny, I opened one up before. It was like flying. I didn't want to have to jump right into it. This one kind of lagging a bit. No worries with me filling up airtime. No big deal for the big mouth. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you're following us at Mayo Media Net on Twitter. X. Make sure you follow me at John Legaza. All my wonderful work. And I do have some extra stuff. You know, I have customized underdog ranks that you can upload right into the thing. It takes like literally three seconds. I'm not even that good with this stuff. But I did learn to format it. It's color coded to match the site stuff. I mean, I'm updating these things more than once a day with injuries makes a big deal, right? Big shifts going on. That's probably one of the number one things, right? These drafts are unfamiliar. Best ball, of course, right? Should have started at the top. You're drafting your team and you're walking away. How do you not love that? Well, most of us, you know, including myself, believe it or not, like have a life. Family, kids, errands, jobs, things to do, people to see, places to go. And uh, to be honest, managing fantasy teams can be very difficult. You know, especially baseball. It's constantly being played. Not like football is easy. I'm not saying that. But at least the play in football is concentrated. Where if you, if you have a couple hours and you watch a red zone, you're pretty much up to date. If not, you can get everything at once. Baseball is just never, it never, ever stops, even for somebody like me who's following you know, from the crack of dawn, doing the model, getting all the work out. Some games at noon and games going on on the West Coast. You know, I'm on the East Coast here. One, two o'clock in the morning, get ready to start all over again. I oftentimes have mentioned betting work for MLB, like building the same castle on the shoreline. You know, you take a lot of pride in it. You do the very best you can. Some days you get down to little details where you're putting curtains in, moats, and rocks, and stuff. 
I look at these now, but the cops, well, things the same. Come the next morning, it gets washed away, and then it's about, you know, your your character, really, the work ethic that you're going to put in. And, you know, hopefully that's one of the reasons why, I, you know, I've kind of gravitated towards Patty Mayo. He's gravitated towards me, and we've had overlap in our followings, you know, people that are pretty sharp, but looking to have a laugh, but also kind of, you know, we plan on winning. We have a good work ethic and know what it takes. You know, Pat's been doing this for a really long time. And I think the quality of his listenership gets to that. All right, how nerdy was that? Sure, you. I'm not nearly that smart in person. So, best ball, right? You do your draft. It's it's not robust like regular fantasy is. And I think that's probably where the first bits of edges are. So, again, if you haven't played yet, let's say you're not even that big of a baseball guy. You're just sucking on some content. We're going to get you going, where You're going to be competitive. I will put you in a position immediately to be competitive in these rooms because they're going to be, yeah, yeah, we all understand. Yes, I would love to say I'm going to draft one and when it doesn't work that way, right? There are injuries. But again, there are certain edges in the format, I think. So now as we'll get into that, when it comes to hitting, right? There really, I don't want to say there are no positions, but there are no individual positions. Everything's clumped into infield or outfield, right? Only outfielders are outfielders. Everyone else is an infielder. So what that does, right, 12-team league, 20 rounds. But since you only start pitchers, infielders, and outfielders, you start three of each, one offensive flex. The computer will optimize your best score, right? That's the really the crux of best ball, why I enjoy it so much. And it allows you – I mean, like technically, you almost, almost – again, it is important to be responsible. We'll talk about that at the end. But it's providing you are responsible. You know, don't ever play with money you can't afford to lose. It should be pre-budgeted. Can't really overexpose yourself because it's not like more work is going to hurt the previous work you've done, which can be the case in regular fantasy, right? Fab leagues, waiver leagues, all that stuff. I know myself, I'm playing in the NFBC Champions League this year. I'm not really doing other waiver or fab leagues. You really do need to focus, really digging through all of the new show, fine tooth comb all the time, trying to cover, you know, seven days, 24 hours a day. Just it's maniacal. Best ball, not the case, man. Underdog, beautiful interface, really easy to use. Again, nice low price points. Ten dollars is the high tournament. They just opened up a three dollar tournament. Another great spot, you know, you just sign up, match that hundred bucks. You know, you even you get a chance to compete as far as volume, and I think there's something to be said for that too. You know, in this age of right algos and quants, you know, I don't know, I'm not going to deny the stuff's out there. It can make it hard for regular Joes, particularly when it comes to you know multiple entries. Underdog kind of has you covered there, right? You know, down to three bucks. Top prize, I think, is two Gs, but it's a much smaller, it's a much smaller contest. Also, hold on, I have that info right here. This is the bump three. 7,500 people, you know, so it's a lot smaller. And you get a bunch of wax at the tree. Interesting enough, I have found in my own experience, even times I think I've, I've maybe over diversified, right? It's, again, remember, right? I mentioned it three outfielders, three infielders, one flex, three pitchers. So 20 slots, generally, you're going to find yourself at. I think there's a, pitchers get hurt a lot, so I like to assign seven. And then it's either six or seven infielders and outfielders, depending on maybe where you put your earlier capital. When now it's six, waiting for six more people. I have a feeling there's a draft wrapping up. That just went to five. We're clicking down from so just a few minutes, hopefully. We're going to get this draft kicked off, and then we're going to take off from there. So I'm just trying to lay the brickwork with the stuff you can expect. But sort of have that idea, you could set those limits, by the way. Also very important. I think understanding the it, the site itself, we're down to four. So make sure that you do that. You go to the rankings page, and there's a, it says limits. And you can set seven, six, seven. And that way, if you ever get caught auto-drafting, it won't draft, you know, all 12 pitchers in your, your dead money. We're down to three. So, yeah, a draft probably just wrapped up. We're going to be going. These things do loop pretty quick. Now, the one thing you sh could and should expect because of the consolidation of the positions, but 
not all of them, right? Because outfielders are still outfielders. So the number of outfielders hasn't changed. And we're entering this age of, you know, platooning, constant platooning. So even if you have 30 teams, three outfielders, right? I'd be 90 starting outfielders, a couple of platoon guys. Whereas first, second, short, third is four. Catchers like four and a half. I gotta really be honest, I don't really look to draft catchers. I need guys that can get to 600 plate appearances. There's only very few, right? Will Smith on the Dodgers. To me, he's a waste to pick. There's your first little feather in the cap. He's an excellent hitter. The Dodgers are awesome. Otani is going to DH. Will Smith is not going to play on the days he doesn't catch. So when you, especially when you add up right now, it's it's four and a half infielders times 30. You know, it's at 120, 140, whatever, opposed to the 90 minus platoon. Outfielders are going to get pushed up. There's only one more person waiting for. Then I'm going to have the board chair. We'll go to Office uh, Facia Belle. And then, you know, over to the draft board. We'll go back and forth as I talk through it. Again, I'm going to show you my personal ranks are right here in the room. You can get them. Check me out on Twitter. Pin tweet. I'd love to make them available for anybody. I wonder if I can prove if you used. If you can prove, if you can prove to me you used the MMN code, I, I give you my own code ranks. I wonder if you can do it. I'm going to work that out, Pat. Man. Right? You talk about these stuff. Now we're just waiting. Booyah. Draft starts in just a few seconds. All right. Here we go. All right. I want to make sure that the sharing look good. Everything look good. Big Johnny Stud in the five spot. I like that. So we're going. Again, you'll see my ranks are there. What do you notice? It's all orange. Why? Because outfielders are going to be prioritized because of what I mentioned before. Scarcity. Do not ever be surprised if the first 10 picks are outfielders. It's up to you who you like better. Again, that's where I think the volume comes into play. Where I mentioned being careful to over diversify, I think in the first round you should, right? Nobody knows if it's going to be Corbin Carroll over Julio Rodriguez or Juan Soto or Otani. Try and get as many of those guys as you can. Where this gets hairy is if you end up with a back. You know, back end pick, let's call it, right? Back in the first round. After those outfielders are gone. Listen, Freddie Freeman is awesome in this one. Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, Bobby Webb. But the problem with those players is, you know, you really don't want to fill those slots because the outfielders are going to run out. You'll see exactly what I mean. So even if they're great players, you can find yourself in a position that's really not so envious just because they, they it's you you will see and this is one of the reasons i truly believe i'm going to we're going to put you right in the plus eb spot of being able to get to the playoffs and then it's kind of anybody's game but i think we're getting most of our teams to the playoffs remember a couple injuries is okay also because all right so if i'm going to go with julio he was first in my ranks like easy enough again if you update upload my ranks into this and walk away. You're going to draft them like a pretty, like a pretty sick team. Strider went middle one. You will see that sometimes. I think he has kind of separated himself from the pack. Pitching injuries are what they are. I am definitely a Strider file, so you don't really have to sell me on that. He had been falling to the back of the first, which is one of the decisions I was making when I decided not to go outfielder. One of the interesting spots. One of the more interesting pieces on the board, I should say, is actually Kyle Schwarber. You know, in Roro drafts, he's like a 90th pick. Here, you're going to see him being considered right around that first-round turn if that person wants an outfielder. And if they don't, he's gone in the middle of the second. And there's a bit of a drop-off, you know. You mean Michael Harrison, Luis Robert. Listen, he's a very good player, especially Robert. But again, limited rosters, you worry about injuries more than normal. And then a guy like Michael Harris, who I think is skilled, crazy skilled. That team is so good. He's going to bat like seventh, eighth, or ninth. And that's a really tough spot. So the scoring in this league is not your general scoring. Hitters, a single is three, a double is six, triple is eight, homer 10, walk three, hit by pitch three, ribby run, ball two, steal is four. Again, um, I have data sheets where if we can hook up these rankings, I have converted bat X projections into, you know, underdog per plate appearance. You could see 
you know, who we think are the best players on a per plate appearance basis when you get down to the nitty gritty. Again, remember, one of the advantages, I forget which one of the bright football guys has been talking about this, but the scroll down, you know, scrolling down in best ball is like a winning method. These drafts are generally shallow. Players tend to fall. ADP updates quickly. So if a player falls outside the purview, like the general purview, the scope of the draft, they could get forgotten. And this could be a player that you like. Where am I going to go? And we'll get to this in more detail when you see it unfold. Or our infielders, right? Like I mentioned, there are more enough, there's more than enough infielders to go around without needing to dip into too many of the catchers. So if you know that there's a depth of good, viable middle infielders at the end, you have to think at least a little bit about saving, you know, a few of them. I, I've swung back and forth. Again, you know, I'm playing a lot. I love this platform. It's awesome. I'm playing kind of nonstop. But it doesn't change the fact that you there you'd want to diversify, you know, your – strategy where i've gone extreme at some points where i filled in all of my six outfielders at first you know then filled in all my pitching then filled in all the infielders where i think you want to be a little bit more balanced you know we will get into that like if you look right now i guess maybe i'll do that and put myself in a in, in a not say spot but if you're looking at the ranks at the screen and i know we might have some audio only people i have bryce harper at the top and bryce harper as the 20th overall player in what essentially is an OPS league, right? So I know I read some kind of custom scoring, and it's it, don't let it throw you off, right? It, it, it's OPS. It's an OPS, right? You you want to get on base, and then you want power is is huge. Pitchers, check it out. Actually, you know, let me see if there's anything else to draw from the hitters, right? Because you get on with a walk, because a walk is the same as a single. On oh, base is awesome, and all these guys that walk are, are really valuable, especially if they're on good offense is hitting top third of the lineup, right? These are parts of the calculus that we're thinking about all the way throughout. And then, again, always keeping an eye on balance between infield and outfield. I actually like the, the Harper play. I want to really like the price where we got it. But besides that, it gives you the one kind of standout infielder. Now you'll see I probably won't draft another one. Unless somebody really does stick out, I probably won't draft another one until the end. Like, we literally might go five infielders to finish. But also, remember, like I said, I like to balance capital spent with the roster build, meaning wherever I spend less infield, outfield, that'll be the one that gets a seven. So if I if I front load outfielders here, then I may be comfortable going with six, depending on who they are. You know, uh, Mike Trout kind of comes to mind. I have him at the top of my list. I'm going to be honest with you. I, if I don't know what the regular EP is alone, had to do Underdog again, not only just for sponsoring this people, yeah, yeah, but they, they're they always updating. And they allow you, again, this is a new update, where you could see the market ADP next to your own rank, give you an idea of where you're different or disparate. I wonder if Trout falls. If Trout doesn't fall, this and it gets a little hairy. For me, and we'll talk through it for the 30 seconds. All right. So Simi might see lots of middle infielders going. I kind of disagree with this, right? So I, I disagree. I want OPS, I want per plate appearance impact. I'm going with my trap. You know, I know it's limited and injuries are part of the calculus. And he might even be one of the players that maybe you say to yourself, well, you know what, I'm gonna balance um towards it, towards it. Like if you even if you want to assume some of his games and say, be this is a perfect example because we have a situation where we did invest in infield and went with Harper. Knowing that Trout might not be able to project 450 games, right? I wish. Then maybe you go with the seventh outfielder, depending who they are. I'm telling you, it can be really, really tough for having injuries happen. As, and I think also, I mean, I know sometimes I see my own ranks being used. As the market begins to see the dynamic that we are already laid out. Yes, you love Ozzy Albies. You love Marcus Simeon early. We're not trying to say these guys are not good. These guys are very good. The problem is when you get to the end, if you need outfielders, you're going to see, I don't want to call out names, a team uh, next to me, right? You go Strider, Riley, Vlad Guerrero. 
well, let's try and keep an eye on what the outfield looks like. You can't have platoon players. You cannot start platoon players. So then even pitching is sitting out because we've had a lot of injuries. So, again, I have just found in my experience, right, as you see the board kind of roll out here, that you need to make sure you have starting outfielders fill in as many good pitchers as you can. Again, there's there's a lot of pitchers out there. I play a lot of NFBC, so that's 15 team, nine pitching designations. Now, that does include relievers, but they can be any P. That's a really good way to understand the depth of the pitching pool. You'll see also there aren't a ton. There aren't a ton, but there are certainly a handful or a large handful of starting pitchers that we're going to really like that are available in the last round. Knowing that is great compared to the infielders that are available, which are like, again, you're going to see, we're going to even call it names, right? Uh, the Mariners, right? So, okay, this is that's funny because I have Julio Rodriguez. So we'll probably end up with a Mariners stack. J.P. Crawford, who had an awesome season last year, went to drive line, leads off every day, plays every day. He's like a last round guy. Ty France, who coming off a very bad season last year, again, went to drive line. He kind of ran bad. I don't have time to do all the granular stuff, but, you know, all the fantasy stuff I work on. Home run a bow regression, pulled fly ball regression. It, it can regress in a positive nature, and that's what I'm expecting from France. Idea being, yeah, you invested way up for Julio Rodriguez. But if you get Ty France and J.P. Crawford with your last two picks, not only, you know, did you make a top three stack of what might be a good offense, you know, you fill in two of those infield spots with very less picks. You can, right, you're taking from Peter to pay Paul, right? You're understanding the depth of the market in order to shape the decisions earlier on. And that's what this has become all about. Now, if you take that to its conclusion and say, well, now I'm 10 in and I feel really good about these outfielder front options, then you kind of bridge out, right? If you have one bullet, I think you should try and win it with one bullet. If you are going to spread out a little bit, then it's okay, you know, right within reason. Trying to stay plus EV, of course, right? Because the market demand is going to be huge. Again, you could see, well, I've got interesting decision now. Right, I already have two outfielders with Bryce Harper. If I want to go with another outfielder, which is like, man, Castellanos, Hap, Jazz Chisholm. Again, I really like to play for it all. These are large fields. I'm going to go with my boy Jazz. I'm going to keep stacking the outfield. You know, now Bryce Harper, Julio Rodriguez, Mike Trout, Jazz Chisholm. We're talking about guys that have potential to be kind of first round finishers and that's where we want to be right those top side guys i don't know i guess there might be somebody rolling their eyes about the like, injury stuff right now again if you can predict it let me know how man. we can make a lots and lots of money on it in fact if you're sure of any player that's going to get hurt you should go bet their unders you know their future unders right on their home runs and on their ribbies and on their everything and the fact is just that we don't know. Also, to Mike Trout in particular, without Shohei Otani there, Trout has the door open to DH. Not, he's going to play the field, but at least the DH a couple times a week and maybe keep him out there. Jazz Pizzo right now is healthy right now. He's also young, guys. Just get healthy. These things are weird. I think he even got hit by a pitch at one point. Like, you don't want to be damaging guys for that. So I'm going to stick with the upside, keep continuing to lean into the Outfielders, you saw a couple of big time pitchers go right after me. That was Yamamoto and Glass now with the back to back. I've got Altuve at the top, Castellanos, Ian Happ, who's back, Ellie De La Cruz. Funny, Ellie De La Cruz, so we're going to go upside. I mean, he's probably, he's probably the guy. But Mike is actually telling me now, fifth pick. Remember, I was talking about balance, and I think we probably want to lean into an ace. Right, where if I had I gone Yamamoto, had I gone Glass now, then maybe I'd go Castellanos or Hap. Well, I think both are really good, but they're also pretty good examples of we're at pick like 52 right now. 
are they necessarily like what you think of as top 50 overall players? The answer is probably no. Right? The answer is probably no. So we're going to dip into the pitching pool. I got Gaussman ranked at the top, although I'm a little worried about, about him starting late. So I have Gallon, Nola, Kirby. And we're going to go with our man, Zach Gallon. Kind of perennial Cy Young contender. Innings horse. I know people, again, trying to take him for innings in the playoffs. I just, I don't, I don't think we figured that out yet. You know, give me the pitchers that are really good. Guys that don't know what I've gone out and dominated. Guys with good secondary offerings that can go distance and get strikeouts on good teams that can get wins. Oh, they call that a segue into business. We didn't do pitching scoring here. Check this out. Pitchers, wins, five. Quality start, five. Those are not to say they're the same. Those are correlated, right? Strikeouts, three. Innings pitched, three. Earned run, minus three. End. What did you notice? No penalties for base runners. Okay, so walks, not as big of a deal, right? So just off the bat, we're guys like Dylan Cease, guys like Blake Snell, where you don't get punished for the walk but get credit for the strikeout, those guys, you know, get a little boost where people might be worried. The problem, of course, when you have pitchers with poor control is that sometimes that, you know, stunts distance, right? More pitches, less innings. And that could get in the way of the quality start. So it's QSWs to the four, right? Quality start plus win. That is that is it. That is the one, especially, and, you know, I kind of made a mistake. I properly correlated wins to quality starts, which we need to. The thing is, our innings pitch is kind of the same also, right? So you, you – can't get the quality star without getting 18 points, right? Three innings. You need six. So any quality star, yeah, the number is five. It's five plus 18 is 23. And we could win, now you're at 28. And, I mean, if you had 10 strikeouts... That's another 30. That's 58. Even if you gave up a run, you're at 55. Some pitchers can go right twice in a week. That's another reason why I like to have the seventh starter. Because I want as many shots at a two-start week with a guy. Remember, right? Best ball, it's optimized best score, but in a weekly window. So reaching into a deep pool of pitchers that have topside potential. Being able to get you, you know, 100-something points a week is just a big needle mover, right? So you don't – as many pitchers as there are, because I said that, right? We want to gauge how we roster our team based on scarcity. Pitching, yeah, there's a lot of other pitchers. They're not all great equal. you got to have a couple guys that are really topside. Speaking of which, I have my eyes on a couple of them right now. See, Ian Happ is 10-man. Ian Happ, this is really tempting to go with Happ and get the fourth – Outfielder, I'm going to drop back and punt. The team in front of me went with Santan there. I'm going to go topside pitch and go to Reese Scoogle, who's having a fantastic spring, coming off a ridiculous, you know, finish the last year, and a huge step forward. So to recap so far, again, right, I mentioned balance and impact, right? That's a that's the the two attack vectors. Julio Rodriguez, Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, Jazz Chisholm. Zach Gallon, Tariq Skubal, right? So I think we're doing a pretty good job, if that's our goal, of impact plus balance. Uh, looking back now, I'm already very glad that I took Bryce Harper. Uh, when these come, we'll talk about the type of infielders that you will have. And again, it's, it's wholly possible, right? Remember, if we punt on infielders, then we're going to have seven instead of six. It's wholly possible that of guys like J.P. Crawford and Ty France and maybe like Anthony Rizzo and Edouard Julien, Julien, for my Canadians out there. I know there's plenty of you out there in the Mayo Community Universe. It's very possible that, you know, you draw uh, winning scores, right? Again, it's only in segments. So if you have seven guys, you need three spike weeks out of seven to rock. You know, the other guys could be terrible, absolutely terrible. 
I think there's something to be said about that is also looking to avoid players that are maybe a bit boring. I think JP Crawford kind of comes to mind, but he fits into the stack. Where a guy like Rizzo, right, Anthony Rizzo, dead pull hitter, lots of fly balls, Yankee Stadium, kind of guy could hit, you know, seven or eight dongs in a week. Man, now I have my choice of I'm really hoping Saya doesn't go with this next pick because Saya Suzuki is like, yeah, he did. Uh, I jinxed it. He was like 15 picks past EDP, and I love Saya this year. And, of course, he's an outfielder. So I have one more outfielder before a tier ends. If you're looking up, I have Jordan Walker placed above what's got to be three, six, maybe ten pitchers. Right, if you notice my ranks, they're very they're segmented positionally. That's on purpose because, again, I wanted you to be able to import my ranks and come away with a strong draft. You know, I've seen people that put these things together, and it's not. The mind is in waves, in tiers, and you you pones through it, uh, which I think is the proper way to do it. It's, it leads people saying, how do you have him ranked over him? It's not, it's not always so black and white. Within a position, yes, those are that you can compare apples to apples. Positionally, it's not apples to apples. It's just, it's just the, not how it works. So we went with Jordan Walker. Again, looking for the sophomore breakout. He had a good season. Even though they push, I think he's like 21 years old, by the way, right? We can be very hard on these kids, expecting a ton from them, like that they're not going to grow. So adding Walker to the outfield, you know, it's going to make me, it's making me feel really good. Because now we have four, like, legit starters, and they're starting to run out. So just looking at my ranks, I'm hoping – that one of my six guys makes it, although I'm seeing Yuri Perez. I thought I dropped him. I have to drop him a little further. He must have he slipped through my my ranking update somehow. So I'm not so I don't actually have six. I only have five. But it's Grace Rodriguez, Bobby Miller, Cole Reagans, Carlos Radon, Joe Ryan. I'd be happy with any of those guys. And I have a mix. Same thing, Frida. I have to read, I have to redo my update. Maybe I forgot to upload it. Because Friedel is out of place, right? Remember, the injury stuff is huge. And again, I'm, I'm really surprised to be taking this L. I, man, I must have backed out. I must have backed out of an update when I shared because I had an issue with some player IDs. So I'll get, the, I'll get that cleaned up immediately. But that that's one place where you can kind of get smoked. Although, if you notice, all the injury guys get drafted anyway. I think people leave on the dog on order draft sometimes. And you really got to be careful. You do not want your Perez at cost right here. I love Yuri Price. He's like one of my favorite young pitchers in the game. He was like a dark horse for me to win the Cy Young. He's one of my most rostered players up to, you know, March 11th when he had a, not just a blister. I don't care about blisters. He could be fine. There's elbow soreness as well. We haven't gotten an update. You know, you don't want to draft pitchers that are dealing with injuries right now. Cole Reagan's Merrill Kelly goes. I didn't really, I don't have Merrill Kelly in this tier. So I always love that when people pick from outside my kind of bubble. I had Grayson Rodriguez and Bobby Miller queued up. Grayson Rodriguez goes. Bobby Miller next up. That's where I'm going. So you can see I spread out my pitching. Right. So my pitching was my pitching was spread out in round five, round six, round eight. But it's pretty solid. Gallon, Scooble, Bob Miller. Infield, just Bryce Harper. Again, we're gonna have to, we're gonna buttress that. <laughs> I said, but we're gonna buttress that with with volume, right? With players, with bodies. And Julio Rodriguez, Mike Trout, Jazz Chisholm, Jordan Walker in the outfield. Drafts starting to slow up a little bit as people, you know, start to feel pressed to think a little bit. Riley Green, Jaron Duran going. If you're familiar with the underdog format, that's Duran is getting pushed up like crazy. He was one of the value outfielders available later in drafts. That was one of the things I mentioned earlier that the market kind of sharpens as we go, right? Underdog super popular. Some people wait for the very last minute, maybe because they're, you know, it could be March Madness or they're into golf or whatever the case is. I don't want to deal with the injuries, you know, whatever it may be. Doing baseball at the last second. Well, to avoid those injuries, 
but they also are like immune, right? Or hard, they're they're almost ignorant. I didn't use the word ignorant because I don't mean it like in a negative connotation. But they're they're ignorant to what we've been experiencing, right? We're, we're, but Durant goes thirty weeks later. Right? If somebody said, "Well, I don't see enough starting outfielders, and I'm taking him now," and just like that, that's how right markets move and change. Now people see that he was going at um, you know, eighty. He was going at after hundred, and now he's going at eighty six. And you know, to move up two full rounds is really kind of a big deal. All right, let's pop into the zoom in. Of course, Perez and Friedel at the top. Someone is going to get stung. With those guys, I got Spencer Torkelson. He's 15 picks after ADP. If he drops the two more spots, that's the kind of guy that I will right fit in. Right, remember I was talking about got values falling, and then maybe go. You have a guy who's this is a number one overall pick, ceiling, total ceiling play, and we started to see the real improvements we were looking for. The discipline led into contact quality. He had a bunch of home runs. So if Torkelson makes it, I'm going to go with Torkelson. If they're not Abrams, I would not go Abrams. I'd rather than skip down to Torkelson. Goes, and, you know, when you see those badges, those experience badges on, on the dog, that's what that shield is. You know, you can kind of expect to get clipped. So I've got Perez on top. He's got to get moved down. Friedel, they're both hurt. He's got to get moved down. My, again, my apologies. I don't know what's going on. I hope I don't have to read through the whole thing. Anyway, I have Abrams. I'm going to skip Abrams. I'm going to go right to Outman and, and the Dodgers. You know, again, the outfielders are starting to run out. If I just bring up the remaining outfielders, Friedel, again, hurt. Jung Lee, Elo Jimenez, Yoshida, McCormick, Morell, Sawinski, Varsho. Man, you know, there are half a dozen teams that need four outfielders still. Now, and then all of a sudden, we're into basically like part time kind of guys. That's where I think people lose in construction. In this. So again, I got the draft board up. Sorry, every time I switch over, I have to scan back down, but that's cool. You can kind of see the beginning. I'll give you a second if you want to just look at the top. You can see all the outfields up to the top. Then the middle infielders get sprinkled in, and then it becomes kind of pitching heavy for a little bit. As you see those, the green, which is infielders, start to dissipate a bit. Then lots and lots of pitching, right? So that and that whole next weave of pitching went. You see the outfielders start to, to like to, to trickle down. Because they're just not there. It even if you need an outfield at the time, right? One a quick way to lose a draft is to force a position over the commodity, right? The points that we're looking for, the production that we need. And all those guys I just mentioned all went right after the other, right? So as I was talking about it, pulling back on the outfielders, we just had six of the last eight picks. There's that whole tier that I mentioned. Lee, Buxton, Jimenez, Yoshida, Josh Lowe, Jackson, Churio. You don't even know what we're going to get from some of these guys. I'm not really huge in Yoshida. I don't know. I'm, I feel like he feels like the guy could end up out. I mean, he's like the DH for Boston. It's not much of like a like a stick. You know, it's not like, oh, my God, Yoshida's coming up. We don't know what we're going to get from Jung Hu Lee. The anticipation is he's going to lead off every day for the Giants. So I see it. But you could tell there are just inherent risks already kind of built in. So we're coming up on my 10th pick halfway through right now. See, now I have five outfielders as they're beginning to wind down. And I feel okay only needing, you know, one more or two more, depending how it shakes out. So now you can kind of, now you can, you don't have to go blindly with the ranks. You know, you can kind of make your decision. So I have I have Reese Hoskins at the top of my ranks. I have him ahead of ADP. Probably for a situation like this. I have to decide if I want to go with him or perhaps get my fourth pitcher is kind of where I was leaning and maybe going with like a with a Tanner Bybee. My fear right now is pitching is gonna run out before infielders do. And again, I and I know I'm really relying on Bryce Harper, but when you take Bryce Harper. Top 20 overall, you're hoping he's going to be the guy to fill in that scoring week most of the time. So, of course, why would have when Perez, he's hurt. We're going to go with the youngster, Bybee, for the Guardians. You know, I love the pitching development there. They've been so good as far as an organization goes. Getting the most um, out of the starting pitchers, you know, that was just the beginning. Gavin Williams was another guy, but he's hurt, right? So every time 
one of these guys go down, the whole the whole mountain has to get has to get moved up. So I hope we are starting to see the things I was ranting and raving about earlier on kind of come to fruition now. Right? We pushed up the outfielders. We're paying market price, though it's an elevated price. We were paying market price because that's where Julio Rodriguez goes, right? And all of a sudden, the Trout and the Chisholm price, Trout 29, Chisholm 44, don't seem as elevated because here we are, you know, at pick 120, and we're getting down to literally the last handful of everyday starting outfielders. We're, we're going to be into the platoon bats very soon. So Hoskins, who I skipped on, is still floating around. Anytime a guy was deciding on and don't then swings around, I generally go that way. So I am going to queue up Hoskins. And if not, I'm probably going to go. I have McCormick as the next outfielder. But, yeah, I have a little bit of a ranking update to do because I think I like Sawinski and I think I like Ward better. Hoskins didn't go. So I'm going to go with Hoskins again, a guy who's – He's going to be a 30 home run bat. Like he's a, right, that's the type of hitter he is in a really good park in Milwaukee. It was called the Miller. I, I hate the uh, the name changes are just horrific. It's like the worst thing in baseball. So Hoskins to go with Harper. Now you can see the confidence of waiting so long, right? We, we took an infielder in the second round and then waited all the way until pick 11. And now that I have a guy like Harper who we're hoping to score every week and a guy like Hoskins that we're hoping to score every other week, then we're going to go with either four or five guys we're hoping for. Our, you know, let's not call it one out of three. Let's call it – it's not really two out – one out of three and then two out of three, just three out of six, right? So one out of two, you know, right? Or even maybe a little worse now. Maybe the maybe the Hoskins where I miss. We're hoping for Hoskins to go for, you know, 1.3 out of two. You know, that's just how we're going to – you're going to win in this on the margins and, of course, trying to stay healthy with your picks. Let me recap the last round and give you an idea. So after I went by the Hunter Green, Jose Rios went. So there's still some pitching, but you can see it's starting to drip down a little bit. I like Hunter Green. I love the per start ceiling. But half the games in Cincinnati is not any good. A couple of pitchers that I really like, the pitchers I was hoping would fall, but I skipped for Hoskins on, are now all gone. Chris Sale and Shota Imanaga, I both really like. But they're both really have moved up. I have a ton of these guys much later. But you can't dream on last month's ADP or you're never going to get them. Cody Sanga went. Again, he's going to be out for a while. I'm not sure if this person is not – doesn't care or, you know, I, to me, you're really going to have a hard sell with me taking pictures that are already hurt. There goes Sawinski, who I mentioned with Chris Bryant. Lawrence Newbar, outfielders again, just going fast, man. Absolutely flying off the board. We're up in a few picks. I'm going to bring up my Zoom view because I have a decision to make. Looking at Varsho or Taylor Ward, I think right now I have Ward over Varsho because he's healthy and looking looking good. And now I can see a guy like Taylor Ward as your sixth outfielder. We are easily going to have the best sixth outfielder in the league. I don't even have to look at the board to know that. And then having Gallon, Scooble, Bobby Miller, Tanner Bybee, I have a hard time thinking, like, our pitchers are going to be too far behind, you know, the 75th percentile or whatever. And then the offense, the infielders, is supposed to be the, you know, the crappy part. And we're leading with Bryce Harper. So there was kind of, you're right, I laid out the, so let's go with Ward. Cap off the, the outfielders. Right, so to give you to give you an idea as I scroll back down, Varsho I don't right before I didn't even notice that. So right, just when you think, oh, I can wait around, there's like six outfielders, and and just like that, you know, you do not want to get left out in the cold. And it's not to say that I can't, but we've done the math, right? So we know, we already know. that there are infielders at the end. We're starting infielders. You know, say what you like about, you know, let's, let me break some up. I'll give you a better idea. Like, say what you like about um, 
who did I mention before? Like Anthony Rizzo, I'm seeing Andrew Vaughn, Brandon Drury, Ryan Noda. These are my guys. I, I, you know, my rankings are shifted up and down, but Brendan Donovan, leading all, going to lead off for the Cardinals every day. Matt Chapman, top third for the Giants. Right after Tyra Estrada, there's like a giant stack. Top three of the Giants offense, they're available in the last few rounds. Alec Ball may not even get drafted. You know, there's a lot of these guys that are good. Like these guys are you know, good major leaguers in decent positions with full-time jobs. Mikel Garcia is not even drafted. He could lead off and steal 45 bases for the Royals. Granted, it's not a stall base league or Roto, but they are worth five points. And if he's going to score 100 runs and 45 bases, he's and not being drafted. There's part of that like scroll theory I was talking about before. Jake Berger, Brian Hayes, I mean, Nolan Gorman. These are guys that I like in, in any kind of league, like in, you know, regular redraft leagues. So the fact that these are like the forgotten kind of assets is fine by me. Um, you can see Yuri Perez, TJ Friedel still there. People hit to the injuries. So we're going to go with the pitcher, Christian Javier or Bailey Ober. I think I'm gonna man. I have Javier a tick above, but I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with over, just to kind of balance up my portfolio. He's been getting pushed up, and he's been getting harder to. Oh, barely over. I mean, it's been harder to get at ADP. So to be able to just get him, you know, half a round later at 149 or whatever, it's a little bit of a treat. And again, just stacking on the pitching, right? Gallon, Scoble, Miller, Bybee, over. Okay. Plus, I also like, you know, I mentioned the two start stuff. Not that you can nail this down to an exact science. However, having pitchers spread out through rotations could help you max out those two starts. Right. If you have all ones, they're probably going to line up in the at least for the first month or so. And um, you know, Ober might not. A couple of guys we like at the end. Um, your Carter Crawford. Let's scan to the end. I like to give people names, stuff they could use. Uh, again, my ranks are are set for this stuff already. You know, these are not the site ranks. Again, if you're unfamiliar, Underdog has like a really robust player pool. I did the work for you. Again, check it out on Twitter at John Lacaza. I, I dig through everything and bring up all the pertinent names and I'll whack off everything. <laughs> that was an accident. Um, so all those guys that are kind of sunk to the bottom, I have, you know, floating up top. Mackenzie Gore, Brian Bayo, Ryan Pepio, Kyle Harrison, Griffin Canning, Jack Flaherty, Carter Crawford. Aaron Savali, these are all like last round guys. Chase Selseth is a guy. He's not quite there. I really do like Selseth, but it's funny. I just wrote about this at the Athletic House. Just as you like, like you hear a sleeper, but everyone's always competing for like the deepest, darkest sleeping secret. It played to the room, right? Don't, don't take Chase Selseth over Aaron Savali. Probably not too small. Even a guy like Abbott, I know he's in Cincinnati, also have his games really high tops on. Again, to get as a last pick, right? So if that's a guy that you're kind of team streaming, right? You're able to dip into the pool. He's the kind of guy that can go get the quality start, plus the win with the 10 strikeouts, get you at 60 points. And that's like a huge, oh my gosh, huge. So, you know, it is about distance, right? Whip, again, not so much. Whip only in the, to the effect that it helps you stay on the field longer, but not a whip lead, no deductions, where usually there, there are. Okay, let's see if we can talk through this one. We're at five pitchers, two infielders, six outfielders. So even if we were to theoretically cap our outfielders, now we have a couple more pitchers to get. I said I like seven, so I need two more. I have a couple pitchers sitting on top of the tier here that I really like. But I also see, again, I have another rankings mistake here. So I'm going to jump my ranks for a player. And it's Christian Incarnacion Strand, who really only is this far back because there was a playing time log jam in Cincinnati that's now kind of alleviated. Right, Nuevo Marte, 80 game suspension. Someone else, too. Oh my God, shame on me. Oh, Strand right in front of me. My gosh. Oh, this guy just sniping my life away. All right, so let's go with um, Nick Pavetta is now 20 picks past EDP. I mean, he's not getting the opening day nod, but man, you, let's go. Let's go. He's having a good spring. He was really good last year. 
I don't have a ton of Pavetta, but he generally is not falling that far. To give you an example, look at my ranks. He was next to Brandon Fott, who has an ADP of 180. Right now, we're at pick 165. So I had I had to go with Pavetta and trying to clean up some CLV there. Wow, 20 picks after ADP for a guy that's you know healthy and like fine. Let's go. Let's go. Love that. That's a great way to help yourself get unique builds, right? To keep it on value. If you're quick lesson for this stuff. If you're always pushing up all your favorite players, your teams are going to look similar. Now, while that's fine because this is a narrow pool, and right, you don't want to order watered down drinks. You want it as close to the perfect drink as possible. There is something to be said for allowing values to come to you then and creating unique combinations for yourself, at least. So I'm pretty excited about Fennel because I'm not the biggest provider. We saw. We did see the top side as far as per star basis goes, and it's definitely there. I had Encarnacion Strand circled. Interesting enough, I do have my next infielder circled is a catcher. I know, I know. But remember what I said. It's not just because they catch. We want a catcher that has a pathway to 600 plate appearances because they could DH, and that is William Contreras of the Brewers. Brian Hayes just went, who I also really like. See, so when you start to see your guys go, think about at the position, right? Again, we're not ignoring infielders because there's a million of them at the end. It's There's a lot that we like. There's a lot of value, so we're, we're dropping back. But if you start to see guys go, you know, we're still looking for a starter. William Contreras could be. He's a big on-base guy, right? So that's a big help in this format. He can DH and play every day. That's a big format. Uh, boost in this format. We also have Reese Hoskins. So we give ourselves a little two, three stack there, a little brewer stack when they go off, right? If they go off or a set, or if they're in Colorado, right? These are the kind of the ways that you can rack up these big time scoring weeks. So we built in a couple of accidental stacks there. Then the infield is Harper, Hoskins, Contreras. Not, I don't really feel bad about that for something that was kind of an afterthought. The outfield is Julio, Rodriguez, Mike Trout, Chisholm, Jordan Walker, James Outman, Taylor Ward, feeling strong about that. You know, all in the top third of the order, except for Outman, but that's the Dodgers who make up for it, the plate appearances with the scoring that they do. So we're at six pitchers, three infielders, six outfielders. The one decision stylistically I'm trying to make is I, maybe I should get the seventh outfielder again because Trout and Chisholm have missed so many games. But you have to like them. There's really not a ton of guys that I really like here. Maybe Parker Meadows on Detroit. We didn't get Torkelson. That's a better fit in that spot. I mean, Tyler O'Neill of Boston, he's already banged up. Max Kepler, Jared Kelnick, part by player. Nelson Velasquez, right? So you already see it happening. The stuff that I was talking about where there's a lot of part-time guys. I don't even know if I'm going to – I don't know if I want to dig in here yet. I don't know if I want to dig in here at all. Maybe Parker Meadows later on. Jose Siri for Tampa Bay. Maybe he's got like a 25-25 season in him. Other than that, outfielders are destroyed right now. Bad spot for outfielders. We're only in round – round 15 just ended. You know, there are teams that need them. There are teams that need outfielders. And you're reaching, reach right now. Team next to us has Stephen Kwan, Giancarlo Stanton, Alex Verdugo. I mean, that, I'm sorry. To me, that's not going to do it. Yeah, you could get the miracle season from Stanton. Verdugo, not really the kind of guy that moves the needle in this, plus Stanton with the missed time. Kwan doesn't really move the needle. I mean, he's going to get on, and I guess you'll get runs in, in, a, in a good run out. He could be okay. But you're looking to slug, right? You're looking to slug. So that same team that I mentioned, again, I, I, it's not these are bad players. This guy doesn't know. It's, I, I don't like doing that at all. That's not how I feel. I just feel that as you're stacking infielders, those become more comparable, right? Like an 11th round Anthony Volpe. How different is that than Andre Jimenez, a full round leader? I can tell you Derek Cody's bat loves Jimenez on a per plate appearance basis. Guy like Jake Berger in the 13th, you know, and, and Carnegie and Strand was in the 14th. You got Brian Hayes was in the 15th with Gorman and Contreras, both guys that I like. So I think that that's really what it is for me is the opportunity costs 
of not selecting those guys. You see, I have a small tier of infielders here. Because I went with the Contreras route, I may skip it for that one pitcher hanging out. If he makes it there, my buddy Bryce Miller on Seattle, if Miller makes it to me in two picks, that's the route I'm going to go because I already prioritize infield. Right? I, know I, I want to be very clear that we're trying to give really good advice. I'm trying to win. But I'm trying to win. I'm trying to show you how to win. We're not – this is being cute, right? And I follow my own advice. But rankings are not binary, right? It's not yes or no to rankings. Absolute yes, absolute. No, you got to go within it. So we were, he did fall. So I'm going to go with Miller. Miller is a really, really good SP7. You know, so now, right, you see where I'm, as we, I explained to you how I wanted to build and why I was going to build it that way. Then I went and built it that way. And hopefully you're seeing why that's beneficial. The pitchers are really starting to run out here. A lot of pitchers that I like here. They're starting to run out. The last kind of viable tier of infielders starting to go, right? They're all the guys I mentioned. There's Tovar and Rizzo starting to go even a little bit earlier than they were a month ago. That's what happens with injuries, right? For every player that moves down, the entire pool has to move back up. But I wanted to get back to the you know, right we're building the pillars, right? Three pillars, infield, outfield, pitching. That as tempted as you might be to keep piling into that infield bucket later on, you're going to find you have to reach twice as high, right, to get there later. So we just need to map out the end. We're down to our last four. And it's just whether or not I go three infielders or four of the four remaining picks. So we're really queuing up infielders. And again, we could... You could try and circle out for you're like, man, I was, I had been kind of getting into Nelson Velasquez on the Royals. I mean, he's got pretty crazy pop. But the worry of platooning and the downside of, you know, tons, let's say tons of um, strikeouts, you know, killing this guy. Is a is a real worry, you know, for for players like him. Yeah, he has he's hitting one fifty six, and then he has nine strikeouts and thirty two. So striking out, you know, thirty something percent of the time with a one fifty batting average. When you're playing for a spot in a team, you know that I don't know if he's going to really get it done. Is Matt maybe Walner on the Twins is another guy that right has some pop, big OPS, could run into a thirty five home run season, possibly. He's batting 0-69. I don't want to overreact to spring training stats, but guys that are on the bubble, that's what teams are looking at. Gosh, he struck. He has a 50% strikeout rate this spring, 50%. Parker Meadows, who I mentioned, just went, right? So there's a guy who was really forgotten all the way to the back end. Now he's all the way to the top. I'm going with my guy, Edouard de Julien, who I think is excellent. He is a, you know, kind of on-base guy. I think he's going to grow into some more power, and he's having a phenomenal, phenomenal spring. Right, he's batting 345 with a 1058 OPS, got two homers and a steal, a double, 10 hits in 29 at bats. Julien um, is, or at least should be, I shouldn't be so definitive, is at least in line for the full complement of work with Jorge Polanco going. So, right, like I promised you, every day, top third of a good lineup all the way through the draft. And that's what I think has differentiated myself and my strategy from others is I really put that at the fore. I don't want platoon guys. I don't want bad players. Like, it's, it's, it's a shock. I mean, you wouldn't think so intuitively, but some of these boards, these some of these, some picks are bad and busted picks. And I'm sorry. There's a couple of them right there, two of the last three. To me, Andrew Benintendi is a busted pick. Henry Davis on Pittsburgh. That, I mean, he was smoking hot in the spring, hit some home runs. I, I don't know. As an outfielder, I just don't know if he's there. I, they they took that having him catch. So if he's going to catch, just that inherently knocks down. He played appearances, but also takes work away from learning how to hit. So I just think it makes it really tough, right? It makes it really tough. Plus, he's young. He's a sophomore. So he's never really done it. Jared Kelman. Jared Kelnick, I don't even know if he should be being drafted. 
The Braves just brought in Adam Duvall to quite literally be his platoon partner. Adam Duvall's also, from what we know, I know people love prospect shot. Adam Duvall's better hitter, right, than Jared Kovic. He's a, like a pole fly ball god. You know, Paul Skeens. Paul Skeens is not starting the season with the Pirates. I know we all going to have six or seven pitchers. Guys are dropping every single day. And it, you may not get Skeens until May or June. You just don't know how, the Pirates, right? The Pirates are not a super competitive team. I actually like them a bit more than the market. Maybe they do. And maybe that's, maybe that's a win. But the fact that it's not even a last-round pick and you're taking guys that are not on a roster – opening day means you've got to be so good throughout the rest of your roster to get you, you know, to the top. Oh, man, I, I had it on me. I, I wanted to look up the – okay, all right, so here it is. So you played for 16 weeks in a 12-team league, and – the top two move on. Then of that 12 team, only 10 moves on. Then nine move on. And then there's just a final group. You know, to be top two relying on known zeros, listen, it's going to be tough sledding when you're playing me. You know what I mean? Not to be arrogant, but such is life in the big city. So as I mentioned, right, man, am I on the mark or am I on the mark? Get up in the comments section. Let Pat and Mayo know how good of a job we're doing. Tag underdog. On social media, thank them for bringing us back. Okay, like I said, who would be available? I said Andrew Vaughn would be available. Andrew Vaughn, it is. Woohoo! I mean, Andrew Vaughn, back the back end of the 18th round is why we're waiting, right? That's why you're able to wait because he is, again, playing every single day in the top third of lineup. Sure, they might not be great, but he is pretty good. He's another guy that, like, he's a post hype sleeper. You know, everyone's ready to kind of discard, to discard these poor guys if they're, you know, not fantastic out of the box. But, I mean, Julian and Vaughn could be, you know, top 30 overall outfielders, right, in this format, top 40 outfielders, which makes these just tremendously profitable. These picks are tremendously profitable, right? Top third every day, top third every day. Keep hammering it, keep hammering it, and shift, you know, shift the puzzle around that you keep ending up like that. Now, I'm tempted, like I mentioned, if I'm going to go two infielders or not, the two guys I mentioned to go to Julio are both sitting there on top of my queue, J.P. Crawford and Ty France. And if we don't get France, we go Brandon Drury. If not, Ryan Odo is going to lead off for the 80s every day. If not, it's Jeff McNeil, Brandon Donovan, Jonathan India. Heimer Candelario is going to play every day for the Reds also. I mean, these are all guys that are not drafted, right? I know I'm scanning out Zach Neto, Mikel Garcia. These are all guys who are just not going to play. Uh, Tim Anderson, which is funny. I know people laughing because he was so bad last year. Guess what? He's leading off every day for the Marlins, and he's like a fraction of the player he used to be. He's wildly profitable. Same thing. So that's what we want to attack this. So it was funny for me to actually lay out earlier. I hope it speaks to my experience in this framework and with the format and you know speaks to hopefully how much i'll be able to help everybody down the stretch in this last week and then hopefully you'll you know be into our style of framing think we're compelling hopefully we win some stuff because then we'll be coming at you monday through friday with underdog parlays right underdogs have to pick a lobby and all types of cool stuff that continue adding i don't even want to box myself into what we'll be doing right now but you Bet your bottom dollar. We're gonna have a woo, we're gonna have a underdog parlay every single day. I'll be playing with you because of course I am the realness. You know how I roll, right? You know me, homie. And then we'll be doing all the regular stuff, you know, begging you. <laughs> sign up again. Man, you like the show, you want us back, you sign up. MMN MMN Mayo Media Net is the promo code when you do that initial deposit. You know, sign up, get a couple drafts in. Save some money for those pick them parlays because I'm um, planning on feasting. You know, we did really well last year. If you're unfamiliar, right? I have my own proprietary model, projections, and all, all the whole line, you know, team outputs, just everything. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to be packaging this stuff, but I got it. It'll be there, right? 
So you know I'm working on this stuff around the clock because it means a lot to me. Having a show means the absolute world to me. So again, thank you, Patio, and the great men and women at Underdog, Brooklyn establishment, by the way. Boom, yeah, book a lean in the house. As we wrap up these last few picks and we'll get out of here, I'll spare you any more any more of me than is absolutely necessary. But we were you know we we're gonna pick, right? Because I, I we mentioned at the outset there would be outfielders. We had Julio Rodriguez. And we were going to aim, right, to go back 40 minutes of rambling. And I said, well, we're going to leave two out for the spots to go J.P. Crawford and Ty France to make the Seattle stack in the last two rounds. And unless we get sniped right there, which we did not, that played out right according to plan. So we're going to go France. Oh, you know what? Don't call me a bad person. Because we have trap, I'm going to actually go Drury. Because we already have Crawford. We already have Crawford and Julio. I'm going to go Drury and Trout. So don't, uh, you know, don't get too bad. That will do it, everybody, for the, you know, initial launch of fantasy baseball picks and bets here at Mayo Media Net with your host, Big Johnny Stud. 100 thanks to you, Pat, and the people at Underdog. Again, people, you know, we're in that world of you like it, you got to support it. You want more of us, you want more of me, you got to support it. You got to get on it. You got to use the promo code MMN Mayo, a media a network. Start up, man. Hopefully, we're going to have some fun. We'll be doing the show every day. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. You check us out. We'll be doing like a like an evening stream, right? Like a close to lineup lock kind of thing with, again, a daily parlay, but I'll be breaking everything down, showing you off a. Uh, a little bit of why, you know, why people why people come here, right? With the with the all about the guarantee we're gonna be going. We're plus EV, right? Heads up high, right? Responsible play. Which you haven't noticed the message has been down below. It really does mean a lot to myself and Pat, and I know the people on the dog. Uh, Jeremy really at the fore right now of responsible gaming. And you know it's important, right? Because for somebody like me, I'm oh my gosh, if you're familiar with my work, you already know. But if not, like discipline, discipline, discipline. Listen, you can gamble all you like. It's a lot of times not a problem with gambling. It's a problem with losing. I don't mean like, oh, what are you going to win? I don't mean losing that way. I mean using real money. Okay. People with poor plans that use real money lose real money. Okay. That's where problems start. So how do you stop the problem is to nip it in the right, nip it in the bud. Get yourself in a plus EV process and predetermine your risk. And if you fund it like a business, which is why I like these promo codes, you know, you're you put in a hundred, they're gonna give you a hundred. So right off the bat, that's beautiful. If it's free, it's for me. But now you you have a bunch, right? That's what you have to use. But before you go live, right now, drafts aside, because you need to do that before the season, you can tail for a day or two. You don't always have to play live. This is where the average person gets in trouble. They decide to just go into their wallet and start betting money. That's live before they have a plan. Here's a challenge for me for you. Show me, show yourself that you can be profitable for one week. What is one week? First week. Fund with underdog. Get the match. Hail for a week. See if you're profitable, right? This is what you're doing without me. Shouldn't have said that. Should have on your own because that's really what I want. Listen, I'll show you how to play, you guys. I'm not hiding anything. But the rising tide lifts all ships, right? And the better I am at teaching, the sharper my following gets. They respond. I listen, right? My door swings both ways. I'm a sponge. I'm malleable. But it really means a lot to me that we're being responsible. You play with demo cash. That's how I first became, you know, a high end stakes trader and then a high stakes better. Was doing with paper, with paper at first because you could say, okay, I'm taking Yankees plus 110. I guess a Dodgers that said this and T total this and this. Da, da, da. Do your math with your risk management. Let it play out for a week or two weeks. And you say, wow, all right, I'm profitable. I made a few percentage points and now I feel comfortable by my process. Now you go live. Think about it. You can't imagine how many people have, you know, not done that and taken my advice and said, wow, man, I used to call it the combine. It, John, it took me five times to face the combo. So there's five buy-ins. Five. So not only did it save you money, it made you more effective going forward. Here's your last little feather in the cap. That didn't do it for you. I don't know what will. Rate, review, and subscribe. Here, Mayo Media Net. 
It's fantasy baseball picks and bets. We coming at you Monday through Friday all season. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at John Legaza. Hit up at Patty Bale. You know, a lot of stuff. If you want more of these? We're gonna we'll keep doing them. We'll do some dingers. Maybe get a guest or something like that in there. And uh, that should do it for the inaugural episode. We will catch you soon. Thank you so much for picking up what I'm putting down. Baby, 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 really do appreciate being back on hot mic. So from big Johnny Stud, Mr. Mayo, and all the fine people associated with the show, that should do it. Last lesson. Remember, when you work this hard, it feels a lot less like luck. You know it. Peace out, everybody. See you soon.